Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Money DIY. Today, it's part two of the 998 engine rebuild. And today, wonder who that is? Man, there isn't much better than getting a fresh set of new parts. So, I can't just, I can't figure out who this box is from. What do you guys think? Is it, is it from Amazon? I don't know. We should just get into it and then we'll definitely know who it's from. Oh man. Now hold up, let's take a look at these parts in a little bit more detail and really appreciate some amazing craftsmanship. So now that we have those glamour shots out of the way, let's talk about the parts that we actually picked up for this build and kind of go into why we picked them out. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that I am holding a new camshaft. And the reason we ended up getting a new camshaft is we decided, well, the engine's out of the car. This is the perfect time to replace it if we are going to. And it's going to be a nice little upgrade, especially on the super light moke that this motor is going into. But we weren't quite sure which camshaft we needed. We knew that we wanted to do something a little bit more aggressive than stock, but we weren't sure what was worthwhile doing and what complemented the 998 motor with the 1275 head best. So that's where seven mini parts came in. We gave them a ring, talked to one of their mini specialists, Jack, and he told us in the years that they've been working on these minis and the A-series motors, and rebuilding them and, and working on all the different parts of the motors, they found that this Elgin Mild Road Cam is the perfect complement to a 998 motor that's a little overboard and has the 1275 head. This camshaft works really well on these motors and is a great way to pull out that extra little bit of power out of the higher flow components that we have on the motor. Now when you're picking out a camshaft, and one of the reasons that we needed to get this before it went to the machine shop is that the camshaft requires a set of cam bearings. And these camshaft bearings are, unlike the rest of the bearings in the car, they actually have to be pressed into their placement. So these metal bearings have a channel and they cup the mounting places on this camshaft here, here, and here. And so this slides into your motor, and the whole purpose of a bearing is that it provides a smooth, controlled surface for another smooth metal surface to slide up against, and it also allows oil to move in between the two metal surfaces to provide lubrication and prevent engine failure and component failure in your motor. Now, you can actually see on these camshafts these channels right here that's how oil gets in between these two surfaces. So it gets in this channel and then spreads out. And then that is what allows this to be lubricated. Now, when you're picking up a camshaft though, it's important to take note of the oil pump that's on your car. And the oil pump looks just like this. This is a brand new oil pump that we got for this car. This is one of those things that I always recommend replacing in the process of an engine rebuild because the motor is out it's easiest to get to, and there's no reason not to replace something and know that for sure it's going to be pumping oil at optimum efficiency, because you don't know how old the oil pump is that's in your car already. Now it's important that if you're only replacing the oil pump, that the drive, the spindle right here, is the same type of drive that is on the end of your camshaft. So you guys can see right here that this camshaft has a slot drive and this oil pump is also a slot drive. So it connects right in, and as your camshaft spins, 
It spins the oil pump and pumps oil through your motor. There are also adapters for other types of drives. I can't remember off the top of my head all of the different drive types, but if you're watching this video, you should see the different drive types popping up on the screen next to my hands. Those are all the different drive types that are available on the Classic Mini Cooper. But if you're replacing the camshaft and the oil pump, then it doesn't really matter. You just want to match those two up. Now, aside from that, there was only one other part that we absolutely had to get before we brought it to the engine shop and it was these little retainers. And these little retainers, they barely even look like important pieces of metal, they're so tiny. But what they do is they actually hold the valves in place on top of the spring. So the springs are actually able to actuate those valves. So these were extremely important. If we didn't have these, then the valves would just fall right out the bottom of the head like they're already kind of doing. Now one of the awesome parts about this engine build being sponsored by 7 Mini Parts is that they also sent over some really cool other parts that we're going to be putting in this motor and it's going to make it really stout and last a really long time. One of those is these cold rolled iron lifters. Now these lifters are what your push rods sit into and then the lifters are running up and down on top of these lobes right here as your camshaft spins. Now, the cold rolled iron is supposedly much, much stronger. So these are going to be a great addition to the motor. I'm really excited to put those in there. Um, the old lifters are just the standard steel, I guess, or iron lifters. And they probably would have been okay. But like the oil pump, it's one of those things that like you have your motor apart. You might never have your motor apart again. So why not replace it with the best parts you can? at the time of rebuild, and then you know you're confident that your motor is going to be running really nice for many years to come. Now until we get the engine back from the machine shop, I do want to wrap this camshaft back up and this oil pump, and then I have one thing that I want to show you guys on the block before we head over to the machine shop and uh, get all that sorted out. Now the one last thing that I want to show you guys before we get this engine over to the machine shop is that there's a special consideration that we have to take into account with the 1275 cylinder head we're putting on this 998 block. Because the 1275 cylinder head was made for cylinders that were actually much larger than the 998 cylinders, even though we're overboring them, because it was made for a larger displacement block, what that means is that the valves are going to be opening and closing into areas of the block that are not technically open. So to solve that, we actually have to accommodate the valves coming off of the cylinder head by cutting into the block a little bit. So as we're looking at the block here, you can actually see there's some kind of uh, extended areas here where they kind of lobe out here and then on the inside. And those are the areas that we actually have to cut into not me personally, the machine shop is going to be doing this because it's something that requires a good bit of precision. You could probably do it with like an angle grinder or some, some like rudimentary tool. But your best bet is to have the machine shop do it when they are working on your motor. And the, what they'll have to do, you'll see a photo popping up on the screen here. This image is actually from a forum that I've found and it's a really good representation of what you have to do. But you have to actually cut into those lobes a little bit to allow the valves to come down into the cylinder head, into that, uh, into that combustion chamber without intercepting the block and destroying your valves. So it's one little thing that some people often miss and it's extremely important if you're introducing a new cylinder head to a smaller block. But with that said, Let's get this stuff packed into the back of the Golf and get it over to my favorite machine shop in Charlotte, Raymond's Auto Machine. Alright, so that's it for this episode of the 998 Rebuild. I know it wasn't a crazy long episode, but I don't actually have a lot to do to the motor until we get it back and we start reassembling it. Now, as many of you know, 7 Mini Parts is the part sponsor for this build as well as my channel. And as a perk for watching these videos, they set up a promo code for you guys to use if you want to pick up any of the parts that were used in this video and it will give you 7% off any of those items. Now the promo code should be popping up around the top here. 
and it's DIY 998P2. You can use that at checkout and you'll get 7% off. Now keep in mind, this coupon code is only good until February 28th, so if you want any of those parts, head over to the links in my description below and again, use that promo code and you'll get 7% off any of those items. So a big thanks to 7 Mini Parts for sharing that coupon code. And to finish up the episode, I am going to end it with some more gratuitous shots of the engine in its kind of before state. So we have a nice comparison to what it will look like when it gets back from the machine shop, painted and fully rebuilt. So till the next episode, motor on.